thanks to whoever sent me this video link here of a hacker conference where they were talking about EVSEs and the dangers of electric vehicle charging equipment and people hacking them to create fires in your home, etc. I think this is utter nonsense and let's talk about why. There are a few things going on in this video that was sent and we need to dissect these one at a time and explain why this is not really a problem for people out there that are maybe worried about a fire and their EV charging. Maybe they saw this video or some of the reporting around this, which has been absolutely bonkers, not so stupid. So let's dive in. First thing up, the EVSC they're talking about here is an open EVSC. I actually owned one of these at some point. It's probably still kicking around in a warehouse back there. But the one shown here is a 48 amp maximum EVSC. And they're claiming that somehow through magic ha hacking, you could get an EV to pull 81 amps through this thing, and then it would cause a fire and your house would burn down and that would be terrible. Well, let's unpack this again. Number of things going on here. So. This EVSE is a 48 amp unit, and you can tell that because it was designed for a 1450 or 1460 receptacle. This actually may even be one of the lower rated ones. Visually, they're basically the same on the outside. Now, this is a ostensibly designed for a 60 amp breaker, and that is key. If you have this properly installed, you called up an electrician and say, hey, I wanna put in a 48 amp EVSE, or you simply followed the instructions when you did a DIY install, it'd be on a 60 amp breaker. Absolutely, that breaker would have tripped before this sort of engulfing in flames thing would have happened because it'd be sucking down 80 amps, and that's more than 60 amps. Now, a lot of folks do get this part wrong, and they think that a breaker is going to trip the instant you pull more than 60 amps. That's not the case. Most breakers are, are sort of inverse time breakers. That's the best way to describe them. So the higher over you go over the limit, the quicker they're going to trip. So if your 60 amp breaker is pulling 60 amps exactly, it actually could end up overheating given time if that's a really constant load. 61 amps, it's definitely going to trip eventually, but when? It's going to take a while. Now, if we're looking at this chart here, and interestingly enough, most breaker manufacturers do give you a time chart so you can see exactly how long it's going to take a breaker to trip based on the overload rating. We're talking about a 133% load, something like that. Most breaker manufacturers say this breaker should have tripped in under one minute. And that's logical because one minute with appropriately sized conductors everywhere along the line for this load would be okay and wouldn't have melted and caught on fire in this one minute window. Of course, if it was 90 amps, 95 amps, et cetera, that window shrinks even shorter. And by the time you get up to a 200% load, they're gonna be tripping pretty darn quickly. But there's some additional dumb things going on in this video that you need to know about. The first one is obviously, I don't know who parks their EV so close that there's only about a foot going into the EVSE and a foot going into the vehicle and the rest of the cable is just coiled up neat and tight right there in the hangar just below the EVSE. It, it's just not rational. Most people are not going to operate this way. But yes, clearly you should spread the cord out a little bit so that way if it is overheating, it actually has a better ability to cool. The next thing, of course, is that the car would have to somehow be fooled as well. So this is not simply the EVSE going, hey, I have 80 amps available, which, you know, it could be a problem, I guess you could say. The vehicle would then have to be able to accept more than 80 amps. And the average EV just can't do that in the United States. 11 kilowatt onboard chargers are finally pretty normal in the U.S. Once upon a time, 6 kilowatts, maybe 7 kilowatts was more the norm. Now, it's 11. There are some vehicles out there with onboard 80 amp EVSEs, but they are incredibly, incredibly rare. So if you, for instance, plugged in your Ford Mustang Mach-E, there's no way that that vehicle is going to be convinced to pull more than 48 amps because the onboard circuitry just can't do it. Unless you could hack that car software, get it to somehow go way over those bounds, but then you'd be talking about actual on-car problems, and I would assume other things would probably start to fail first, which is sort of another problem it goes back to that breaker. Was the breaker properly sized? If your breaker's not properly sized, then hey, you're just asking for trouble any way you slice it. And we're talking about rational worlds where people have installed these appropriately and the appropriate people have installed them as well. 
Now, lastly, of course, the hacker would somehow have to care about you. And I'm not clear why that would be the case. Say you have a dumb EVSE, and a lot of people have dumb EVSEs out there that are not internet connected at all, because I still fail to understand why I would want an internet connected EVSC if my car's onboard charger is internet connected and I can say, hey, charge now, not charge, charge this much, charge that much, whatever. I just don't know why my EVSC, that thing connected to the wall, actually needs to be internet connected at all. So my EVSC at home is not. So I'm not sure how you would get to it anyway. Even if it was though, someone would have to care about you in your specific case, otherwise they're pulling some random person out of the block. I, I guess that's possible, but again, they would go back to that vehicle not really being able to pull any more power than that. And then they'd have to somehow hack you and hack you at the right time and all of that kind of jazz, only to find out that your breaker chipped before it actually did anything at all. So anyway, if you have seen this video, I call BS on it. It is absolutely a nothing burger and nothing to be worried about. This is one of those things where, yes, in a world where there are infinite possibilities and infinite combinations, there is a combination and a way to make this happen, but it is so extraordinarily unlikely. And there are so many other steps in the way uh, to prevent this sort of thing from going wrong that it's absolutely nothing to worry about. Anyway, thanks for whoever sent this in to us. You can always send us emails and links and things like that to hey at autobuyersguide.com. Just know that we generally cannot reply to anything, but you can always send us info there. And you can always call us at 669-842-1947 if you have a question or a comment for the podcast. So I'll have you later.